Good morning, AP Chemistry. Uh, this is actually the same morning as the other video. Uh, this is my second try, having a little issues with the program, but um, it's expected. Uh, this is Section 2, Nature of Matter. This is purely discussional, so a um, couple of computations that will be used. Most of this is concept, though. Okay, so 1890s. In the 1890s, physicists, which most of them are all physicists, were pretty sure that light and matter were separate entities, that neither of them shared properties. Light was pure energy, matter was mass, had no wave properties. They were distinct from each other with absolutely no overlap. They thought that matter could absorb or emit any quantity of energy, and the first guy to come along and dispute that is going to be Max Planck. Max Planck started playing with radiation from hot metals, and he found that the results did not correlate with the theory of the day that matter would emit all wavelengths, all energies of light. He was only getting a certain quantity of light. So what he came to discover was that energy given off was not continuous, that there were packets of energy that he called a quantum of energy, and it wasn't a continuous stream but little packets at different wavelengths. And he came up with a computation, and his computation is the energy emitted or absorbed can be calculated by multiplying his constant times the frequency of the light being emitted or absorbed. Planck's constant is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules seconds. And frequency is the frequency of the light being emitted or absorbed on his piece of hot metal. So Planck is the first guy to allude to the fact that there might be an overlap between light and particulate matter. Now, Planck, and here are the symbols, and you're already familiar with frequency. This is Planck's constant. Planck's constant has, again, just like the speed of light, two options, 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds, and this is technically per one single photon of light, but they don't write this part, or we can convert Planck's constant or we can convert Planck's constant to kilojoules seconds per mole, which is going to be a second option depending on the units. So your options are all going to be in front of you, and they're really going to be dictated by the units that you're looking for or given. So Planck discovers that light has particular properties, and Einstein discovers that matter has wave properties. Einstein does his photoelectric effect, and he's realizing that electrons are being emitted from the surface of a metal when light strikes it. And he has 
established a threshold frequency of this light. At the threshold, electrons will be emitted from the surface of the metal. Anything below the threshold, nothing happens, which of course makes sense. Anything at the threshold or above, electrons are going to come off the piece of metal and go flying. The number of electrons emitted increases with higher frequencies, which is of course above the threshold. And not only can you kick them off with higher frequency, not only can you kick more off with higher frequency, but they'll go faster also. So Einstein builds on Planck, and de Broglie builds on Einstein. De Broglie comes along and confirms Einstein and says that even the large objects like cars and desks and baseballs and bats and everything vibrate. It's just that the wavelengths are so tiny that you don't realize the solid object you're sitting on or in vibrate. So after all, these guys do their little spiel, and don't forget Einstein was in, what, the 40s? We now know that light has wave and particulate matter properties, and matter has wave and particulate properties. Now, they are not separate entities. Light and matter have similar properties. So a couple of summaries. Summary of the light equations and the energy equations, also Planck's. C, which is the speed of light, 2.9979 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, 2.9979 times 10 to the 17th nanometers per second. Pick the one you need depending on the units given for wavelength, because notice it's just the wavelength units that are different, not the frequency. So if you're given wavelength in meters, it would be silly to use the nanometer one. That is the computation for speed of light. C will always be a constant. It'll be either wavelength or frequency you are finding. Frequency is the little fancy V. Wavelength is the upside down Y. The relationship between frequency and wavelength are inversely related. Energy, this is Planck's computation. Energy is equal to Planck's constant times frequency, but frequency is equal to the speed of light divided by wavelength, so energy can be calculated using wavelength by hc over wavelength. h, Planck's constant, is, again, two options. You can use 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds. Remember that this is per one photon but that part's not written, or it was 3.989 times 10 to the negative 13 kilojoule seconds per mole. So again, which units are you going to use will dictate which constant you're going to use. And this relationship, which I showed you in the previous video, frequency and energy are directly related. And again, I showed you this I drew two pictures that really kind of show the relationship between wavelength and frequency and frequency and energy. So those pictures were in the previous video, so I'm not doing those again. Here's a little example, nice simple example. This is what you're typically going to come across. How much energy does a red light with wavelength of 653 nanometers have? Please remember you are responsible for listing the electromagnetic spectrum in order of highest to lowest energy or lowest to highest energy. You are responsible for listing the visible portion of the electromagnetic spectrum from highest to lowest energy or lowest to highest energy. And you are responsible for knowing the wavelengths of the visible light portion of the electromagnetic spectrum which is 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers, with 400 being the violet, 700 being the red. This falls close to 653. This is in the red zone. Oh, it says red light. Duh. So I'm just going to do this example, and I'm actually going to calculate frequency too. So I'm going to do two parts to it, because this is usually what you're going to come across. 
first part, I am going to calculate frequency of this light. Uh, they give me the wavelength in nanometers, so I am obviously going to pick, and again, 3.00, 2.9979, you're going to get pretty much the same answer. I'm going to pick the right units. I'm going to pick nanometers per second because my wavelength is given in nanometers. And I don't feel like changing this to meters. I don't have to, so I'm not going to. And notice that frequency, again, most of your frequencies are going to be around the 10 to the 14th, 10 to the 15th range per second, which can also be 6.12 times 10 to the 14th hertz. Secondly, they wanted energy. I kind of threw in frequency on you. Energy is Planck's constant times frequency. You will not, you're not going to use this one much at all. You are going to use this one all the time because typically they give you the wavelength like this problem did. And they'll give you wavelength and ask for energy. I threw in the frequency. Go look at the question again. It's not asking you about frequency. So that's just kind of, I took a side trip here. The energy of light at 653 nanometers, which is red, is going to be Planck's constant. All right, so there's my answer using the traditional Planck's constant speed of light in nanometers per second and nanometers. Second option, either convert this guy to kilojoules per mole, because remember this is just a single photon. Either convert him to kilojoules per mole or... Notice, energy in kilojoules per mole and energy in joules per photon. And if you were to convert this guy to this guy and working backwards, which is going to be really tough for me, but I'm going to try it. You are going to get, this is my conversion of my original answer from joules per photon to kilojoules per mole. Same answer. So look this over, work it a couple of times. It's going to really come down to units. That's what's going to mess us up the most. Done with this one. On to the third video, which is going to be... Bohr model, the atomic spectrum of hydrogen.